Kabbalah said there's a Kabbalah Indian, and we all know that a person is meant to be more machme during the time between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Right, this is a famous recite that a person should do extra chumras. The uh, post can speak about various inyanim, for example, people that are making on paspalta, maybe they can be, you know, a bit more machmed or a sesame chuva. The certain ideas of being more machmed and a sesame chuva. Now, one of the boys on Rosh Hashanah asked me the following kasha. Hi. So I don't understand. What's this all about? We're going to be more machmed during our sesame chuva. The Rabbi Shem knows that's not what we're doing. He knows that straight after him, keeping we're going back to whatever we were doing before anyway. I'm not talking about a various. I'm talking about being more machmed and things that were not normally machmed. You know, here we'll be more machmed, right? During our sesame chuva. What's the point? Well, who are we trying to kid? What's, what's the aside? So I just before we get to the halachas of Erevim Kippur and Yom Kippur that we always do every year, just so we should know what we're, we're doing, Kaseida Hadvarim, I want to just I, I understand this idea. There are a few different answers to this question, right? There are many answers, but I just want to give the Oilim a few of the answers that I think are important to know, so that we should understand that it is Taka Kedai to be in, on a little bit more of the Machmir stage at this time, on the days between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kodosh, Yom Kippurim, for a purpose. What is the purpose? Number one, I'm sure all of you are, at some point in your life have maybe worked. Right now, we all know, I don't know if this is the right thing, but this is the Matthias, that when the boss is around, we act differently. <coughs> when the boss is not there, like, I'm saying, oh, we can get away with maybe a few things here and there, right? The animal smiling. But if the boss is there, like, whoa, right? The boss is there, that's how it works. So we know that the Melech Malchayam Lochim is with us right now. This is the time, this is right now, this is the time that the Rabbi Shem is with us. You find him, you seek him, he's right here. The Rabbi Shem is with us. If the Rabbi Shem is with us, Avada, we have to be more careful. We have to be more medayik in what we do. We have to be more machmed to make sure to show. The huh? Rabbi Shem is with us, number one. Number two, we know that the judgment, as we spoke about this a little bit on Rosh Hashanah, the judgment for many Bainanim is not really on Rosh Hashanah, it sort of hangs until Yom Kippur. Most of us are considered to be Bainanim, so the judgment is kind of waiting. So we know we get judged Ba'asher Hu Shom, where he's holding now, not what you did, but what you're holding do right now. Mimela, if a person between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur is a little bit more machme, he takes the rungs a little bit higher and does things on a better level, and he's more machme on things that generally he's not machme on. But Shehu Shami gets judged as if he's right now, and maybe he's going to get a better judgment. That's reason number two. Reason number three, we want to act like a Ben, not like an Eved. There's an Eved, a slave, and there's a Ben that's a son. An Eved does what he is asked to do. Right, he's asked to do something, he fulfills them what the master tells him to do. He's an Eved, he's a slave, that's what he has to do. A Ben, a son, does beyond that. A son goes beyond what he's asked to do. And he does even when he's not asked. Right, how many people have done things for their parents without their parents <laughs> asking? And if you haven't, by the way, then maybe it's a good idea to do that. To take something, you know, whether it's, I don't know, polishing your father's shoes before Shabbos or brushing his hat, whatever it could be. He didn't ask you to do it, but take him. Take something and do something extra because the son does extra more than he's asked to do. And therefore, at this time specifically, we want to be like a Ben, we want to be like a son. We want to have Avinu Shabbat Shamayim. He's our father. He's not just the king. He's not just the master. He's also our father. And therefore, that's why we want to act specifically like a son. And that's why we want to do more things that we're not even asked to do because that shows that we are like a Ben in that case. And the simple chat would be when you start something, you like to start it, right? We spoke about this before, Rosh Hashanah, the Gabbat, the Simon, and the Gemara, and Horius. That is the Simon, mostly when you start off something, you do it correctly, and that, you know, sort of sets the tone for the rest of the year. So the beginning of the year, right now, these days right now, beginning of the year, at least the first few days of the year, we get things right. So there are many, many more reasons as well why the Oilam would try to be makbid on things that they're generally not makbid on because of these reasons. Now, I want to move on to some of the Inyonim that we have of Erev Yom Kippur and Yom Kippur itself, just to understand what we need to do and how to do it, because it is important, there's a lot going on. Uh, we haven't got that much time. The next few days I also want to spend on Inyone Dalad Minim and Yeshiva Sasuka, which also, because we don't have that much time before the end of this month, and I want to make sure you guys know what it means to set in a sukkah, to shake the Dalad Minim. We'll try to get to as much as we possibly can. But today I really want to get through Kaseidat Vam. I want to run through the schedule of what a person needs to know, La Halacha,
of Erev Yom Kippur and Yom Kippur itself and see how much we could try to accomplish in the time that we have. So um, no, no specific order for Erev Yom Kippur, but just whatever comes out. Let me say like this. We'll start with Tevila. Shulchan Aruch tells us that the minig is for the Olam to go to the mikveh on Erev Yom Ha Kippurim, even if a person says the Chofetz Chaim in the Be'alocha never normally goes. Chofetz Chaim says, even if you never go to the mikveh, at least Erev Yom HaKodosh, Erev Yom HaKippurim, everybody goes to the mikveh. That's what it is. The best time to go is, of course, after Chatzos on Erev Yom HaKippurim. Tashbit says you could do it all day. So if it's difficult to go after Chatzos, there is, you can be Yotza either going in the morning, and it's Be'etzim is much from the Shulchan Aruch that you could be Yotza the whole day, not only after to Chatzos. Obviously, we don't make a bracha on that. The Mati Ephraim, by the way, brings down that a person should be makbid on a chatzitza. Chatzitza means there should be no separation between the water and your skin. So if you have, you know, a band-aid on or something and you don't need it, maybe you can take it off. Or if you've got some pieces of leftover from the band-aid, scratch it off or something similar to that to make sure that you don't have a chatzitza. You should be makbid on the Mati Ephraim on the tefila on Erev Yom Kippur. Rav Yashiv Zetzal Paskin, that Tisha Kabim, that means going in a shower, which often can sometimes and other times help to go to a mikvah instead of going to a mikvah, uh, sitting under the shower, standing under the shower for a certain amount of minutes can sometimes help. Rabbi Yasha said before Yom Kippur it doesn't help, it doesn't work. You need an actual memsa, you need a bow, you need a, you know, a, an actual kli that you're dipping into and that is of course a mikvah in that case. Many people comb their hair and cut their nails also before going to the mikvah to make sure there's no dirt under the nails. Again, chatzitza. Shaving as well, all of these things. Again, for those that do not have other, yeah, should be done dafka before in that case as well. By the way, after Tvila, the Indian is to wear Shabbos clothing. The Indian is off straight after Tvila, whenever you're toivel, after toiveling, you wear Shabbos clothing over there in order to daven mincha with Shabbos clothing. Mincha on Erev Yom Kippur is meant to be done with your Shabbos clothing in that case. Um, okay, mincha. Moving on to Mincha after Tefillah, like I said, we wear Shabbos clothing and then we daven Mincha earlier than normal, right? Here in Yeshiva and in most places in the world, they daven quite early because everybody wants to have the Sudam of Sekas with enough time and therefore they daven Mincha at whatever time each place does. Right now, Vidoy. Vidoy, we have to know, and this applies to Erev Yom Kippur and of course Yom Kippur itself many times throughout the day, is we do the mitzvah of Vidoy according to the Chinuch, according to the Rambam. It is a mitzvah's assay to do Vidoy on Yom Kippurim, and therefore the Chazal were massacring in the Gemara and Yuma that a person should do Vidoy not only on the day of Yom Kippur, but also before the Sudam of Sekes. That means before he eats the Sudam of Sekes, he should already do Vidoy, which is what we do in Klal Yisrael, by Min on Erev Yom Kippur and we say Vidoy. Why? Because it's before the Sudam of Sekas. What's the reason that we want to say Vidoy before the Sudam of Sekas? So we have two reasons. One reason is because Chas Hashan, the Gemara says he may choke. Right? And therefore he may, may go down the wrong pipe and therefore we're worried that who knows what will happen to him and therefore do Vidoy before because we don't want a person to lose out on the Gavald de Gamaylo of Vidoy before Yom Kippurim. The Ramban says another reason is because a person may drink things during the Sudam of Sekas that may get him drunk, who knows what state of mind he'll be in and therefore we want to make sure he does Vidoy at least properly with the right state of mind before Yom Kippurim starts. Right? There's no Avinu Akenu, there's no Tachnun in that case over there and of course the Shlech Tzibah does not repeat uh, Vidoy over there. Now by the way, a halacha for Vido that you have to know not only on Erev Yom Kippur, but even on Yom HaKadosh of Yom Kippur itself. You're not allowed to lean on anything. The din of Vido is you have to be standing. You should be bent slightly forward maybe, but not leaning on anything. Don't lean on your shtenda. In fact, halacha lemaisa, if a person leans on a table or a shtenda in a way that if they would take away the shtenda, he would fall. That means he's really leaning his body. He's actually not yaitza. It has to be that you're, free, you're standing up, you can lean a bit, you can hold on to the shtender, you know, whatever it is, as long as if they're taking their shtender, you can still stand up, that's not a problem whatsoever. So that's a very, very important part of Vidoy, to know that halacha. Number two, the other part of the Gemara tells us, the ikka part of Vidoy is avo anachnu va'avo seinu chatanu, that means admit the fact that you did something wrong. We'll discuss that maybe in Kippur by night, but that is the ikka part of the video is to actually be man enough to admit, yes, I have done something wrong. Moving on, eating on Erev Yom HaKippur is a mitzvah da'araisa. It's the most amazing thing that, some, some, that somehow that everyone chaps that on the day of Erev Yom Kippur, I'm not hungry. 
for some reason I'm not hungry. I'm hungry every other day. Yesterday, Tzom Gedali, the Oilem was starving. When it comes to Erev Yom Kippur, I don't know, I'm not hungry. I, it's okay, I, I ate already. I'm good. I had breakfast. I'm fine. But you ask somebody, if you want to do more mitzvahs and more mitzvahs and more mitzvahs, you chaperain mitzvah after mitzvah. We're talking about a mitzvah, Do'oraisa, like eating matzah on Leil Haseda, shaking the lulav and esrog on the first day of Sukkot. We're dealing with Do'oraisas over here. Eating on Erev Yom Kippur is a mitzvah, Do'oraisa. We learn it from Sukkim. The Gemara darshins it. And the Gemara says quite clearly in Yuma Pay Aleph Omad Aleph that if a person eats on Erev Yom Kippur, it's Ki'ilu, he fasted two days on Erev Yom Kippur and on Yom Kippur itself over there. So he gets the mitzvah. What's the reason why there's a mitzvah to eat? There's many, many different reasons. Reason number one, the Gemara seems to tell us, is very simply, posh, because it makes it easier to fast. In other words, when you eat on Erev Yom Kippur, it makes it easier. And Chazal wanted, the Torah wanted a person to have it easier. We may live on Erev Yom Kippur, it makes it easier to fast. That's reason number one. Rabbeinu Yoyna says, I'm married to Kapshat. Zug Rabbeinu Yoyna, it's the Suda of Yom Kippurim. Now, of course, on Yom Kippur, we can't have a Suda, but we need a Suda Siyontav. Zug Rabbeinu Yoyna, the Suda Siyontav is when? On Erev Yom Kippurim. Erev Yom Kadosh, that is the Suda of, of Yom Kippur. Mimele Zug Rabbeinu Yoyna, Shev Kavona. It's a big shine in the post Why don't I make a bracha on such a mitzvah? Every mitzvah the rice, I make a bracha, right? When I eat matzah, I make a bracha. When I shake a lulav, I make a, I make a bracha. Why over here do I not make a bracha? Many different tiruts in the famous rash, but we're not going to go into it this moment of time because we've got a lot to do, but I can put him to realize that it's a din suda in this case. That although the Heilige Shlach Kudush brings down that the mitzvah already starts the night before. That means Erev Yom Kippur. On the night, there are those that hold as a mitzvah to eat. Most hold not that way. Most hold that the mitzvah begins in the morning, of course, after Shachris. There's an alter meaning that the Gabba of the Shul gives out honey cake. Um, if you've ever been to Chassidish place, they're very makbul on that. That the Gabba of the Shul gives out honey cake to the Olam after Shachris on Erev Yom Kippur. Now, what does it mean, uh, the mitzvah? What does it define the mitzvah? And by the way, it's a very interesting thing. We haven't got time to go through this, but people are so busy busy, for example, with Dalit Minim, and they should be busy, because Dalit Minim is an incredible mitzvah, and they're spending hours and hours and hours and hours on the Hadassim, forget about the Yasuk, that's something else, just on the Hadassim they're spending hours, just make a Cheshman, it's a Daraisa one day, the rest of the days are Durabon, and we'll talk about it maybe tomorrow, right, here we're dealing with a mitzvah Daraisa, why are we not sitting Be'in, learning the Sugya, and understanding what means eating, what means drinking, what's included, what's included, it's a mitzvah Daraisa, we should understand it like every other mitzvah Daraisa, so if you look at the Gemara, the Gemara tells us not only eating, but drinking is also included, right, when a person drinks, Avadi, he is included in the mitzvah, and that's the mitzvah of Erev Yom Kippur. Now, you don't have to have bread. It's not a din suda. You don't have to wash in that case, right? Even though there's a mitzvah, according to many, the bit the Mate Ephraim, and others bring the mitzvah to eat fish, which is why many have fish on the first suda, whatever. I'll be that. I'll be the Mate Ephraim, the Vilagoyim, and others as well. Mitzvah of Erev Yom Tov. But I'll call him. You don't have to eat um, meat, or you don't have to eat fish, and you don't have to have bread. You can eat anything whatsoever. I asked for Shimberg Zatzal, what about sucking on a candy? Are you Yaitza, the mitzvah, the Arab and he told me that you are not. It needs to be a kezayis because every eating in the Torah needs a kezayis. Whenever we say eating in the Torah, it means a kezayis. It means an achila that has a chashivas to it, that has a chaloist, and therefore that's what it is. Uh, there are people that eat raisins and popcorn all day. Again, to be oisik in mitzvahs, mamish, the whole day, you could do that. It's an amazing, amazing thing to be oisik in mitzvahs over there. Moving on, Rabbi Yisrael, because we don't have much time, is the mitzvah which comes already at the minig of the time of the ge'oinim, and that is the minig of kaporis. Kaporis, even though there are different minhagim, and I'm not here to tell everyone should do whatever their minig is. The Shulchan Aruch brings down that you should not do kaporis to chickens. Shagoyish minig, he says. The Makar, by the way, is a rashba, of course. But our kaponim, the Ramah, and the minig of Ashkenazim is that we are making, and of course, those that have a minig to do it with chickens, do it with chickens. Those that people have a minig to do it with money, should do it with money. Whatever your minig is, that is, of course, if you do it with money, I think it's about $360, and I think it goes towards yeshiva. I think if you do it with money, it goes that way around. But otherwise, our kaponim, let's move on. The idea of the kaporis, we have to understand it's a very serious thing if you had time we would be myrich in it that we're being machlif. In other words, Be'etzim, it's meant to be as chas v'sholem, going up there to be shechted for all the avaries that we do. But we're switching, we're swapping, not us, we're putting it on the chicken. So we should really actually understand that. When we swing that chicken around it, or as I've done in previous days, I swing it over the oilam, whatever you do, realize that it should be that chicken that goes, that it should be you that has that fate. But our component, we're switching everything that we have onto that chicken, and therefore, 
we, uh, we put it over there. You cannot use Maisa money. It's better to have your own chicken rather than sharing it with others. Does it work if you share it with others? It does work, but it's definitely better to do it on your own. Yes, it costs a few shekel in a Hanami, but it's a Kapora. It's a Chosh The best time is after Stichas and Erev Yom But even if you didn't manage to do it then, or it's too late, you could do it earlier, which is what most people do in that case over there. By the way, if you are going to a place where they are shechting the chickens a la makom, right, straight away, right there, and you yoyt to a mitzvah, kisi adam, which is a beautiful mitzvah. How many people have made a bracha al kisi adam? So gavaldi goes out. There are certain places in Eretz Yisrael where they do it ala makom straight away. You take your chicken after the kaporos and they shecht it on the spot. Be very careful, right? You ben, you know ben knows the kafachaim. The kafachaim says very clearly that if you hold the chicken, right? I don't know if you've, you've ever done this. You're waiting in line with the chicken, getting closer and closer and closer and closer. Zut the kafachaim. Be very careful. Don't don't let that chicken look at everybody else be shechted. That's sab alachaim. Even isa Turn it around. Make sure that it doesn't see all the other chickens being shechted because that's poshut cruelty, and we don't do cruelty to animals on Erev Yom Kippur, or on any other day for that matter. So therefore a person has to be careful. Next, Rabbi said, only because the time, we could just spend time uh, showing each of these things. Kapora. Um, talking about the idea of Mechila. Rav Nassim so you think of the Roshiva of the Mir Zatzal, when he used to speak before the Tkiyas on Rosh Hashanah, so he used to always say the following, he said people would always ask him, which Kavanas does a person have to have? Which highly Kavanas, Yud how does it work? Din Rachamit, like which Kavanas should I have? Bishas, the highly Tkiyas. So he stopped for a moment and he said very simple, have Kavan of the guy sitting next to you. That's what you should think of. Think about somebody else. Now we know the Gemara tells us that a person could do a thousand vidois, but he's not having a mechila for ben adam lechaveri. Mechila and a vidoy and everything else works for ben adam lemokim. If you have upset someone, if you have embarrassed someone, if you have insulted someone, if you've damaged someone, whatever it may be, and more, then the only way you can actually get a real kapora and come into Yom Kippur clean is by asking for mechila, which is why the minig is before Yom Kippur we ask for people for mechila. It's a real thing. No, don't go around saying mochami, 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 mochami. It's an emes de gazach. If you hurt someone, you should tell them about it. The Mishtabur, the Chavetz Chaim Paskins, if they're going to get embarrassed by it, perhaps you shouldn't, you know, itemize exactly what you did and detail exactly what you said, because you're going to embarrass him and upset him and there's no purpose of that. But you can go over to him and say, listen, we've been roommates for the, you know, for the last few weeks or for the last year, whatever it may be. Could be I said something, could be I did something that hurt you, that upset you, that embarrassed you. I'm asking for a mechila. When you do it better, and he should really think about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It should be a real thing. You ask Mechila, you want to come into uh, Yom Kippur with a real Mechila from everyone that may be around you. And remember, unfortunately, the way it is, the closer we are to people, the more likely we are to hurt them. Unfortunately, that's just the Messias, right? The people outside, we generally don't, you know, hurt. We're nicer to, that's how it is. But the people we're closer to, we generally hurt the most. That is the Messias. A person should be very, very careful to do that. I remember hearing so many years from Irish Yeshiva of Shaimek Zatzal, how he told us every year, make sure you come into Erev Yom Kippur on time. Don't show up late. Don't run in to Kol Nidre because you're missing Tvila Zaka. And Tvila Zaka of Shaim Begsam, he said, just give yourself time for Tvila Zaka. It's one of the most beautiful Tvilas. You could just say it in English in the art scroll. Understand it. You're being moichel, everyone. There's so much that you're asking for at that time of Tvila Zaka. If Shaim Zatzal used to always tell us, make sure you come into Erev Yom Kippur with enough time to say Tzvila Zaka before they start Kol Nidre, because you want to have time to be able to be Moichel everyone and to understand what you're saying over there. Just very, very quickly, moving on to the actual day of Yom HaKadosh itself, Yom HaKippurim, we know that there are Inuyim, there are afflictions that the Rabbi Nisham told us in the Torah that we have to keep, and they are for a specific reason. We haven't got time now if you want to go. Much deeper, I'll pick a bola. There is so much to understand. Just the idea of not wearing shoes on Yom Kippurim has so much connection. How we are, you know, how we have that. Our, 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 we have nothing separating our guf to the to the physicality of the world, and we're just like malachim. And there's so much to understand in that way. But we have to understand that obviously eating and drinking that we understand, but touching food and talking about food for children purposes, for example, a parent that's got a child, or whatever, there's no problem in touching the food over there. You're allowed to speak about it with for after you, know, you could discuss it during the break. What time? You know, what we're going to put the food on, whatever it may be, uh, stuff like that. Again, obviously you can't do anything on your kippa for matzum kippa. That's a chana, but you can discuss it in that case. There's no issa over there. Now, people are annoying to smell things on Yom Kippur to be yoyt to the Meir Brochas, right? Meir Brochas Bechol Yom is a chiv. It's a very important thing. And people are makbid because we don't eat and you're not drinking and you're not benching and not so many asher yotzas. So therefore, I need to be mashed my Meir Brochas. So people pass around things. You have to know a few things. We haven't got time to be married in it. Not every single thing that smells nice, number one, requires a bracha. 
right? Stam besomim, that's fake, synthetic, does not require a bracha. Real besomim, various plants, whatever they may require a besomim. They may require atze besomim, or isve besomim, or mine besomim, whatever. But just be careful of the following. Don't make a bracha she'en etzricha on yom ha'kippurim. Don't keep on smelling and making brachas. You can make a bracha, for example, in the evening, and make another bracha in the morning, and then after the break, maybe, when you went outside and, you know, put it on your head, and then come again in shul for mincha, then you can make another bracha. Stam to make bracha after bracha, just because I need to make a cheshbon of my mayor brachas, be very careful, because that could be a bracha she'en etzricha, which a person should be careful. Rechitza. Well, uh, 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 if it's synthetic, then no. Rechitza, a person cannot wash out his mouth, can't use mouthwash, can't brush his teeth, that's a vada, right? Can't put, you know, basically a person cannot get himself wet in any way whatsoever when it comes to, when it comes to, uh, when it comes, if a person has a very bad headache, so there is a headache for a person maybe to wash his face in order to remove the headache, the tshuva's lahuris nosem brings that down, the ahitain for these sorts of things, using deodorant and aftershave, obviously not, makeup for women, obviously not, all of these things cannot be done. Um, moving on to, that's, that's basically, the, okay, that's basically all the things that we have to know. Again, like I said, we can go on and on for hours about these things, but I just wanted to give the Oilam the Seder to remember the Ikim Mitzvah Sayyom and Yom Kippurim is Slicha and Mechila, is asking the Rabbani Shalom and admitting like a man that yes, we have done something wrong and we do want to do better and it wasn't worth it and we regret it. And as I always say, the Marshal, when people ask, and the Bochum have asked this every single year, how can I honestly stand up on Yom Kippurim and say, I didn't enjoy it? I enjoyed every second of that Avera. I go back to thinking about that Avera. It was geschmack. I enjoyed every second of it. So how can I come along and say, yeah, but I shovel and it wasn't worth it, it wasn't good. No, it's not, well, it's not true, it's a lie. Posh not a lie in Yom Kippur. So the, the marshal we have to say is a very simple marshal. If you have a young child and you give a young child a lollipop and he's enjoying the lollipop and then he drops the lollipop on the, on the earth, on the ground over there, the mud, the child picks up the lollipop and continues eating it. And we're going to go, ugh, that's disgusting. But to the child, it's very, very sweet. That's when Avera is. It might have been very gishmak at the time, but it's disgusting because it's against what the Rabbani Shem wanted. And it's that that we are saying on Yom Kippurim wasn't worth it. We should be Zaycha Be'ez HaShem. The Rabbani Shem should give us all a Slicha Be'Kapara. Be'ez HaShem tomorrow will start the Mitzvah Sayyim of Sukkah.